All right, we're going to worship together, and I encourage you just to set everything down. And one of the lines we're going to sing is, nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. So we're just going to set everything else aside and just focus on this one thing.
It's sick. 
Man, getting tired of looking at empty chairs, I'll tell you. It's hard, difficult, um, just singing. I hope you're worshiping home um, along with Susan and us here. Like I said, it's, it's kind of crazy here. It sounds like a couple guys singing in the shower or in the car, belting it out because we can. And I, I hope that's what it's like for our grand reunion. I'm actually singing tonight, getting choked up, just... Uh, hearing the words, seeing you guys sign on, and uh, just longing for the day to be together. Longing to the day to be together in the book of Proverbs as well. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 14 if you want to turn there. Um, again, Proverbs is uh, a book I love personally. Um, so much to learn there, so much wisdom in the book of Proverbs. I think it's uh, good devotionally. I think it's good to just chew on some things, like chew on a single verse for the entire day. I know some of you guys read a proverb every day, whatever day of the uh, month that it is, you read that proverb, and that's, that's good, but sometimes that's too much. And sometimes when we go together, I love teaching the Bible and expounding on the Bible. Um, but Proverbs is one of those books that, for me, is difficult to do that way because each one we, we could do that, and that's why I love our gathering together where we can chew on a proverb together and give application from my life and your life and, and have that discussion. Kind of tougher to do that um, this way, but if you want to put a comment in there, Jim can scream it out to me, and we'll, we'll try to go with that. But Let's pray, and I will ask for a couple of things. Continued prayer for our leadership. Um, trying to wrap up our building project um, in the midst of not everything going on and um, other things being out of whack and uh, all of that. So pray for uh, continued blessing on that. God has been so good, and um, that's all coming together. And can't wait for you guys to, to come in and see the renovated front section and the new cafe and, and all of that, that we'll have time to fellowship before and after. And pray for wisdom. I had, you know, I'm, I'm really big on what did you say you were going to do, as, as my wife has instilled that in me as far as integrity. And I said that we weren't going to gather together through this Sunday morning. So 
We're not. We're going to do this, but pray for wisdom on what we're going to do thereafter. Pray for our, our leaders that uh, they would make wise decisions. Um, I will leave that at that. Um, the other thing I want to pray about is our brother Nick. Many of you guys are on the prayer vine. And <clears throat> if you're not, send me a message with your email. That's It's really family, church family, for people that don't just want to be in the know, but take that as a faithful ministry. And when I send things out throughout the day, you you actually pray. And that's what we count on. Our brother Nick, as you guys know, had a PET scan last week, was supposed to have a meeting with the doctor on the 24th to find out the results of that. That actually got moved up to yesterday. And the, the results of that were that there were some really, really good things. Some of the growth in the lymph nodes had shrunk down to nothing, and then other areas there was actually some growth in. Um, so, and I think I mentioned Sunday about miracles. Sometimes they're instantaneous, and sometimes they're like us, a continual work in progress. He's been undergoing um, different treatments for about three months and is going to continue, um, but they need to have some wisdom on what that looks like going forward. If they're going to continue down there, if they're going to come back here. Uh, they actually had a follow-up meeting with the doctor this afternoon, may perhaps still be there, and uh, to answer questions and, and all of that and see what their different options are. So our desire would be, again, that the Lord would just heal. So let's pray together, church, and then we'll go through some of the Proverbs and see how far we get. I'm, uh, I'm going to Try not to go f too far so we can save them and gather together here very, very soon. So let's pray. Father, we uh, do pray for these things that I mentioned. Pray for our leaders, Lord, who I believe made uh, wise decisions based on the information that they had. And Lord, we pray that you would grant them wisdom and accurate information going forward to make uh, the best decisions that they can and that you would lead us, Lord, as uh, your kids, your saints, Lord, that, that have a mission and a commission from you to minister to one another, to gather, not, not to forsake the gathering. So, Lord, give us wisdom on uh, what that looks like going forward. But, Lord, we do lift our brother Nick and our sister Jody up before you. And uh, ask that you would give them wisdom and direction. That this would not be a time of doubt. That this would not be a time of fear. Um, but it would be a time of leaning into you, Lord, and trusting you. So would you please, Lord, make your will clear to them. Give them direction. Give them answers. And Lord, please, please, please grant healing. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So Proverbs chapter 14, we left off in the 12th verse, I believe, and uh, appropriate of where we are. I won't go through that again. I know I expounded a lot on that last week, but it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And just encourage you guys, this whatever path that you're on, to look and see what it leads to, particularly our young people, um, your pursuits and your goals. What's, what's the end game of that, and where is it going to lead you? Uh, a, an important uh, reversal of that is to seek the scriptures, determine his will for your life, and then how do I get there? You know, how do I get on that path to end up where I want to go? But nevertheless, we're in verse 13. It says, and again, I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation, and then we'll compare it to the uh, New King James, where we don't have you all here to discuss um, just to give us a little bit of that. So verse 13 says, Laughter can conceal a heavy heart, but when the laughter ends, the grief remains. I think that's way more descriptive than the New King James. It says, Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. Mirth, I, I know what that is, of course, because I looked it up. Amusement, especially expressed in laughter. Um, you guys know laughter and joy are not always the same, right? Don't we, a, a lot of us can speak of this personally, but maybe you use humor 
um, as a shield or as a buffer to not have to deal with what's going in, on inside. We, I mean, there's several uh, comedians have uh, self-destructive lifestyles. You know, a lot of what they do is uh, a barrier, a shield, so you won't see what's really going on inside. And when you hear their stories or talk to them about their own testimonies, there's, there's usually deep grief inside. And this is a mechanism that they've developed their entire life. So, you know, I'd encourage you guys as you interact with others and they're jovial and, and always joking and all of that, that pray for discernment there because that could be concealing a heavy heart. And, and when that laughter ends or when the, the company fades, they can be dealing with a lot of grief and that's an opportunity to come alongside and minister to them. Verse 14 says, backsliders get what they deserve. Good people receive their reward. Or in the New King James, it says, the backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. And there's, there's truth in that. Um, New King James, the backslider in his heart will be filled with his, in his own ways. The, the whole idea of backsliding is you were on a path or a trajectory. You were, you were heading in a direction it kind of five steps forward, three steps back, right? You slid back. And, and it's not, it doesn't say you leapt back or you jumped back, but you just kind of slid. It can be a, a gradual thing. I think of it as um, hiking in particular. The rest of the nation doesn't understand what we say when we're talking about hiking in April, but we, we went on a hike Monday and there was still ice in a lot of places. And you get into our higher elevations in Maine, and, and that may be the case in May and June even. But when you, when you attempt to climb something like that, and, and you have uh, spikes on or, or something like that to give you grip, and, and maybe it's, you know, you're, you're digging in with your hands even, trying to continue to make progress going up um, to get to the summit, to get to where you're going. And then it's, it's those times that I turn around to, as if I would be in the lead, but I turn around to see if, if the person I'm hiking with is coming or if they're having difficulties or if they need help. And it's usually when I take my eyes off of where I'm going that then I'll slip or I'll slide or, or my attention and focus is, is distracted from what I'm doing. And it's so much so in our walk with Christ. The backslider in heart, you know, we, we want to be filling our hearts exactly as we are tonight, digging into the scriptures, worshiping together in song, in, in corporate praise with one another. If somebody's out there, man, break the door open and let them in. Let's praise the Lord together. Uh, uh, can't wait. Can't wait. So w when we backslide, it says that... Um, our heart will be filled with our own ways, right? The things of God can be misplaced. And, and, but it says, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Or in the new living, good people will receive their reward, that which we're pursuing to please our Lord. Verse 15 says in the new living, only simpletons believe everything they're told. The prudent carefully consider their steps. Again, I'll read it in the New King James. The simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. Um, if, you're, if you're on social media watching this right now, try to stay on this and not click away. And, but this is like today. This is what we're living in. That people are believing a lie at this point. And... Um, just receiving it, just accepting it. It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden that, that we hear words and, and we just believe them. The simpleton believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. And notice, notice that too. Both translations speak of considering their steps, their own steps. You know, right now everybody's looking at everybody else's steps and what they're doing and how they're responding and what's right and what's wrong and what this person said. And, and we're... we're instructed in the word. Actually, in the book of Acts, we finished not too long ago. In Acts chapter 17, it speaks of the Bereans, 
right? That, that we're not just supposed to accept everything. In fact, Acts 17:11 uh, says, these were more fair-minded, speaking of the Bereans, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness. They wanted the information and they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Right, and we, we, we should apply that to the teachings that we're receiving because now suddenly everyone's a televangelist and you see things all day long about different prayer groups and teachings and all that. Be a Berean, examine what you're hearing in the scriptures and see if it is so. But we can apply this to our own situation and what's going on now that um, things just don't make sense. Um, my hike Monday. I'm going to try not to say 90% of what I want to say about this, but I'm in Franklin, Maine, of all places, I think. Wait a minute. No, I wasn't. I was in Cutler, Maine, even more remote, right on the coast, on the, on the ocean. Um, nothing but woods and trees and a naval base. No one around forever. And it's safe to hike. The trail's open. And it's safe to park in this lot. But there's one outhouse there. And, and the door is screwed shut with a four-year safety COVID-19. And I, a lot of things came to mind when I was there that I'm not going to share by the grace of God. Um, Nicole, don't type them on here, please. Uh, but th- then you look next to the, to the restroom, and this is you know, not the intent of that either, but there's... Toilet paper all over. Like it's safer for people to drop trowel and go to the bathroom right there than it is to use this facility. So it's time to stop going down the road of what's essential, not essential, and what makes sense, what's safe, and resume life. And, you know, those that don't want to can stay home. I think I'm supposed to be in the Proverbs, so let me get back to that. The simple believes every word. I, I'm, I'm right in line with the word of God. Simple believes every word, but the prudent considers his steps well. So I'm going to consider my steps and try to stay off that other issue. But um, I, I would counsel you in that. Carefully consider your own steps. Carefully examine yourself. Carefully take the word of God as, as we do and we go through the word of God. But ask the Lord, Lord, as we go through this, please let your word go through me. And reveal in my heart, reveal to me the things in my heart and the things in my actions that are not pleasing to you. And I I would encourage you to pray that prayer before you start typing or before you start talking in these days. Because it it has amazed me. I think I've painfully made my position clear. But it has amazed me, good, dear brothers and sisters that I love that are so radically on the other side of this issue. And terrified because of information that they've heard you know so so be careful we we want to minister to people in this um verse 16 says the wise are cautious and avoid danger fools plunge ahead with reckless confidence that that almost should be the welcome sign to maine right? (laughs) We have several examples of this in our news and um, amongst our friends and amongst us. Uh, New King James says, a wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages in his self-confidence. A wise man fears, and we learned, I think, in the ninth proverb that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, that reverential awe and respect for God is the very starting point of wisdom. And the wise man fears, and he, he departs from evil. He doesn't play with it. He doesn't flirt with it. He doesn't see how close to the edge that he can get. But he understands evil is evil, and evil is destructive. And the wages of sin is death. So he fears that, and he, and he doesn't toy around with it. He flees. He fears it, and he departs from it. But a fool rages and is self-confident, jokes around about evil, jokes around about where, where they're going to end up and, and the big party in hell and, and all of that. And that is pure deception. Anyone that, it would, that would 
um, joke about that at all. Has zero understanding of what that is. Uh, verse 17 says, Short-tempered people do foolish things, and schemers are hated. New King James says, A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and the man of wicked intentions is hatred. Is hated, I'm sorry. So, short-tempered people do foolish things. We, one of the things, in fact, in the last couple of weeks, I've had numerous opportunities to give counsel in uh, different arenas. Let's just say that. Um, but one of the things I, I consistently try to teach people or encourage people is a quick-tempered man acts foolishly. When we react to a situation, which is so, so easy to do right now, right? And, and you may find yourself throughout the day kind of on an emotional, uh, internal and external roller coaster, right? It's like, okay, let me get on with wh what I've got to do, and you're okay for a little while, and then you give two seconds of thought to it, and all of a sudden you're, you're right there, right on the edge again, all inflamed, or, or you'll see somebody post something, and you're just outraged by it. And we have to take a breath, Yang. And, and we can react. And, and typically when you, you react, that leads to regret. You know, you want to respond. You want to take a breath. You want to prayerfully consider how you're going to respond. Short-tempered people, what are they? they're explosive, right? They might be out of the blue. They just, or inappropriate to the situation or out of proportion to the circumstances, um, just go crazy. Quick-tempered people do foolish things, it says, or quick-tempered man acts foolishly. They'll explode. They react rather than respond and think about. Because there are things that in myself, even in this last week, that I've seen that I've been so outraged by and offended by that my immediate fleshly impulse is to react. And then I think about the, the consequences of that. Not just to myself, but my embarrassment, the embarrassment to all of you, the embarrassment to my family, the, the consequences down there. Um, again, pray for wisdom. A man of wicked intentions is hated or schemers are hated. And, and we oftentimes, you guys see that played out all the time. We'll see people that take advantage of others or exploit others. Um, or just one example that we've seen in Maine that's been in the news is uh, contractors. You know, contractors that might exploit the elderly or take half payment on a roof and then never finish that. Or people that do that to profit themselves, they're not loved, they're not um, liked even, they're hated by, by the general public. They, they don't have friends. Um, verse 18, simpletons are clothed with foolishness, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Uh, New King James says the simple inherit folly or uh, they, they get more of what they're, that they already are. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The, a crown, a crown is something of recognition. It um, recognizes authority, recognizes position. The, the prudent, I think both, both translations say prudent. Those that are cautious, those that examine things, those that don't react but rather would respond, there's a reward for that. You don't, you don't blow it, right? Back to the, the last verse, the short-tempered people do foolish things where a quick-tempered man acts foolishly. I've seen that a number of times where somebody will be explosive on the job and it costs them dearly. Maybe it costs them their job. But the prudent, they're rewarded. They're, they're crowned with knowledge. Verse 19 says, Evil people will bow before good people, and the wicked will bow at the gates of the godly. Now let me read that in another translation just in case I'm, I'm missing something there. But verse 19 says, The evil will bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Huh, this would be a good one for discussion. Because it doesn't 
seem to be true right now. You know, and, and I've talked about some of these things that they are a principle in the scriptures that we see. And maybe you can give one example or, or something where it doesn't happen. But really, in our day and age, evil people will bow before the good people and wicked will bow at the gates of the godly. It's, it's not what we see every day. It seems to be that evil people have control, evil people have power, and, and, the, wicked, or the, and the good are just kind of under their control. But there are several examples in the scripture where we see that it will be so. In fact, um, this ultimately is fulfilled. It's fulfilled for every single person after death. Right, or, or every single person, say, at the judgment seat. Right? Uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name, speaking of Jesus, which is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue, listen to this, every tongue, so that's the evil people, will bow. The good people will bow. Every, every people is what it says, right? Every tongue, everyone that has a tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So everybody that believes differently than you, everybody that wants to argue with you, um, different faiths, different religions, guess what? The scriptures say that ultimately, even those that don't believe, even those that reject, even those that blasphemy, the name of God today will ultimately confess, yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and yes, it's righteous judgment that I would go to hell for, for defying him and opposing him and, and blaspheming him. That day is ultimately going to come and this scripture will be fulfilled with everyone that has a tongue. Verse 20, the poor are despised even by their neighbors while the rich have many Friends, New King or, uh, New Living Translation puts that in quotation marks. Friends, kind of like many of our social media friends. Um, New King James says the poor man is hated even by his own neighbor, but the rich has many friends. So I, I guess that would be, or would be considered, one of the advantages of wealth in our country, that you have many friends or people that pretend to be your friends or people that want to be with you. I mean, it speaks more to the selfishness of men, right? We see who can, who can benefit us and who might drain us or cost us to be their friends. That's why I love that Jesus, when we, when we look at his ministry on earth, he was a friend to the poor. He was a friend to those that were in need. Um, but it says the poor are despised even by their neighbors. If, if people would look at somebody that doesn't have much, they don't have much to give in the mind of, of many people. So they're despised. They're looked down upon. Uh, they are, <clears throat> the next verse talks about belittling or despising them. Uh, let me read that, actually. Verse 21, it is a sin to belittle one's neighbor. These two go together well. So again, the poor are despised even by their neighbors, while the rich have many friends. Verse 21, it is a sin to belittle one's neighbor. Blessed are those who help the poor. Or he who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor, happy is he. So let me ask you a question. When we read in the scriptures about being made in the image of God, who does that apply to? Is it just the rich? Is it just the famous? Is it just this color or that color or this nationality? Is it only the Jews? Is it only those after God's own heart, like King David? No, it says that we are all made in the image of God, male and female. He created us both. So to despise one means to hate one. That's why it's a sin. You're, you're looking at an image bearer of God and you're casting judgment on them and, and hatred towards them. And that's a sin. But it, said that it, it, it notes a separate blessing here. Blessed are those who help the poor. And I know sometimes we need to pray for discernment on who truly is the poor and, and how can I benefit them or if I give them this, are they going to go buy that? You know, and, and those are things. If you're given to the Lord, guys, you're never going to be burned. 
You know, it may be misused. It may be um, not used in the way that exactly that you would like it to be. You know, if you're one that gives with strings, but you're not going to be burned. If you pray, ask the Lord for wisdom, ask the Lord for discernment, and you give in uh, a way that you can help. And certainly there is all kinds of that around us right now that, that, you know, you may pray and, and, and look at somebody's circumstances and $50 to, well, actually it doesn't even cost $50 anymore to fill up their gas tank. But doing something like that could be huge to them right now. And maybe you're in that spot where I could really benefit from that. You know, but, but you, this applies to you too. Blessed are those that help the poor. Maybe it's not $50 to fill somebody's gas tank. Maybe it's 50 cents to help them out in another area. You know, the, the, and I'm not talking about an offering here. I'm talking about an offering in your community and looking at the needs around you and being Jesus, um, being the hands and feet of the church. I've, I've said it a couple of times. The church is, is not closed. We're, we're, we've just been activated. Guys, we've been deployed like we should be, right? The church is not a building. So pray for those opportunities and, and you'll have them. Verse 22 says, if you plan to do evil, you will be lost. If you plan to do good, you will receive unfailing love and faithfulness. New King James says, Do they not go astray who devise evil, but mercy and truth belong to those who devise good? That speaks directly to, there may be temporary profit, but there is no blessing from the Lord on those that do evil. Um, verse 23 it says, work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Uh, New King James, in all labor there's profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. I, I see a, a, a boss in the back shaking his head. Uh, you, guys, you guys and gals that have done church projects or work projects around here with us, um, you, you've seen it even here. There's opportunity to fellowship, and that is a blessing to be able to hang out and work alongside one another. But if you've, if you've done one when I've been here, then probably you've heard, okay, guys, we've got the talking part done. You know, now it's time to labor. Because some would gather and, and talk all day. Maybe you see this at job sites or, or in the office. They want to gather and they want to gossip and they want to talk and they want to debate and, and all of that. And very little work gets done. But it's the work that brings profit. It's, it's, it's the work that um, in the labor that there's benefit, that there's profit. In idle chatter, just talking about work or talking about things leads to poverty. Right? It could very literally so. If, you, if you're a talker and not a worker, you're probably going to lose your job. Verse 24 says, Wealth is a crown for the wise. The effort of fools yields only foolishness. Or uh, the crown of the wise is the riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. So the reward of foolishness is more foolishness. You'll, you'll get what you're working towards. Verse 25 says, A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is a traitor. Those who fear the Lord, I'm trying not to get sidetracked by that. Um, Those who fear the Lord are secure. He will be a refuge for their children. Those who fear the Lord. Again, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I, I think our mindset, let me see what it says in the New King James. Um, actually, 25. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. I think when we think of fear, it's... Uh, Something that we would run from or we would hide from. And fear of the Lord is not that, gang. Fear of the Lord is a, is a reverential awe. It's an, it's an understanding of who he is and who we're not. You know, and, and that's a big deal. That we don't want to depend on our own wisdom. But we want his leading and his direction and wisdom from above. And, and that reverential fear, which is the beginning of wisdom. right? There's not, there's not I'm afraid of the Lord or he's going to get me. It's, it's there's security in that and there's comfort in that. And that's, that's where the peace that surpasses all understanding comes from. He will be a refuge for their children. 
right? He, he himself, it, it's not just a place of refuge, but he himself will be a refuge for his children. Um, it says, yeah, and his children will have a place of refuge in the New King James. Verse 27 says, Fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. So right along the same lines of that, New King James says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. It's not something to run away from, but it's something to run toward and, and receive life, to turn one away from the snares of death. Verse 28. A growing population is a king's glory. A prince without subjects has nothing. Or New King James says, verse 28 says, In a multitude of people is a king's honor, but in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. I think leaders forget that. The leaders are in a position of leadership to serve people. And, and this applies inside of the church and outside of the church. You know, particularly in our... And we began our service praying for our leaders. We want God to give them wisdom and to understand that they serve the people, you know, and, and without people following them or supporting them, they have nothing. I think of the, uh, the Old Testament story of Rehoboam, right? Rehoboam was one of the sons of Solomon and he took over and there was, there was question of, of how he would act and how he would do that. And he, he sought out the wisdom of the older counselors. And they said, you know what? Your, your dad was harsh. And, and you need to serve the people. And, and the people will stand with you and, and follow you. And then you remember he sought out the younger counselors. And they said, you know, go to the people and tell them, you thought dad was tough. You haven't seen nothing yet. You know, I, I can't remember. He, he whipped you with whips, but I'm going to whip you with scorpions, I think he said. And it, and it was this harshness. And then what happened? Ten of the 12 tribes said, see you later. You know, we're out of there. There were no people. I, you see it, in, in, unfortunately, in church leadership. You know, we're, we're leaders in the church. Or you go to a pastor's conference, the uh, top secret pastor conferences. And, and you'll hear people, and I understand the weight of ministry and the accountability and responsibility and the need, neediness of people. But if people weren't in need, there'd be no need for you in the, in the church. There'd be no need for you, right? Um, so people are broken and churches are hospitals. And, and the Lord perhaps has gifted you in some ways. And I, I, I understand. And, and there is a temptation to do that. And I pray I don't do that tomorrow, but to complain about, about people. But... This says a growing population is a king's glory. A prince without subject has nothing. Again, the, the new King James and a multitude of people is a king's honor, but in the lack of people is the downfall of the prince. And I'm not saying we want a multitude of people. We want to become a mega church. But I'm saying if you're in a position of, of ministry and all of you are, whether it be in your home, whether it be in your community, um, understand without people to serve, there's no service. And, and this is how we serve our king. This is how we serve our Lord. So don't begrudge the people, guys. Verse 29. People with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Or he who is slow to wrath has great understanding. But he who is impulsive exalts folly. You know, one of the things I love about expounding on the scriptures outside of the Proverbs is, is tying a bunch of things together. You know, when we go through a chapter, kind of laying out a scene and then trying to, to understand it historically, but then give us application today. And the Proverbs going through, there's, there's different things that are connected or not. And it's really tough to do that. But this obviously ties right back into what I was saying about reacting. People with, with understanding will control their anger, anger. They'll take a breath. They'll pause. They'll They'll respond to a situation rather than showing great foolishness with a hot temper and blowing up and uh, blowing their witness. So verse 30 says, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like a cancer in the bones. New King James says a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. 
I'm tempted. We've only got a few more verses, but I'm, I'm tempted to just expound on this. I've seen this. I've seen the destruction of envy. I've seen the destruction of bitterness. Worse than cancer in the bones. You know, corrupts every part of a, a being. Heart, soul, and mind. Heart, soul, and body. And a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. There's so much truth in that. Worry, anxiety, like it said earlier in this passage, not keeping your eyes on yourself, but worrying about what everyone else is doing can be so destructive. Jealousy is like a cancer in the bones, it says, right? Um, Envy is like rottenness to the bones. And all of those things, guys, envy of what somebody else has, envy of what somebody else is doing. And it's speaking of feelings in one regard, right? Peace in our heart or true joy. We talked about that in the very beginning of this proverb, that laughter or happiness is different than than true joy that comes from the Lord. But peace in the heart, man, it, it, you sleep better, right? You, your, your response and, and everything else about life is better. Jealousy, bitterness, anger, wrath, all of that. Most of us know an angry person. And they're usually not the picture of health unless they're like roiding out, you know, on steroids, all that. Um, but, but still, there's no peace in their heart usually. And it's destructive to their bodies. Um, terribly so. It just, it ages us. It, it destroys us. Physically, I, I truly believe a lot of the illnesses that we have are a direct result of this. So a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like a cancer to the bones. What's the answer to that? Jesus. Plain and simple. Fill, fill yourself with the word. Fill yourself with the Psalms. You know, let it change you from the inside out. Verse 31, those who oppress the poor insult their maker. Again, we're all image bearers of God. So if we despise our neighbor, the poor neighbor, like I said earlier, those who oppress the poor insult their maker, your maker and theirs, but helping the poor honors him. Read that next time you, or or hear that or remember that. You know how the Holy Spirit brings things to remembrance? Next time you have opportunity to bless the poor. Next time you have opportunity or you see somebody in need today, you know, with what's going on around us and and most of our neighbors being out of work, you know, are there things that we can do? Should I do this or not? Well, you know what? Helping the poor honors God because they're going to want to know why in the world you would do that. Why do you want to help? Why do you care? Just want to honor God, right? Verse 32, the wicked are crushed by disaster, but the godly have a refuge when they die. Or New King James, the wicked is banished in his wickedness, cast aside, thrown out, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. Amen. Looking forward to that day. Wisdom is enshrined in an understanding heart. Verse 33, wisdom is not found among fools. Verse 34, godliness makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Um, Verse 34 in the New King James says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen and amen and amen. Historically, we've seen that throughout all of history. Nations that stand for God and honor God are exalted, are lifted up, are blessed. Those that don't are condemned. And uh, sin is a reproach and a disgrace to that people. And our country is in a dangerous place right now. So pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Um, when we when we are not doing all the other things mentioned in this Proverbs, and we're reacting to things, and we're explosive, and we're um, trashing our leaders and all of that, we're, we're not doing anything to help this peace, guys. Godliness makes a nation great, but sin is a disgrace to any people. And regardless of how you feel about different la- leaders, the scriptures are pretty clear that they're appointed by God. May not be appointed for the reason that you want them to be. It may be appointed for judgment. But they're there because God said, hey, this person at this time is going to be there. 
And godliness makes us great. And they're not going to get there on their own. That's where intercessory prayer is essential. And, and if you have a hard time doing that, then start with saying, God, help me to do this. Ch help change my heart. Help me to pray for them. Lord, help me to love the people I don't like. You know, and, and start with that. Because sin is a disgrace to any people. It affects us all. So pray, pray, pray for our leaders. Verse 35, a, a king rejoices in wise servants, but is angry with those who disgrace him. Um, the king's favor toward a servant, I'm sorry, the king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him who causes shame. A king, a boss, a parent, right? That, that applies all over the place. But gang, I'm going to leave it there. It's a good stopping point. We will pick up, actually, you know what? I want you to, it just goes along with what I was saying. And you can meditate on this throughout the week and prepare yourself for next Wednesday, hopefully being a part of the discussion in person. Um, but the very first proverb in 15 says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You want to shock somebody? You want to surprise somebody in this debate? A soft answer turns away wrath. They are tuned up for a fight. A harsh word will stir up anger, not ministry. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. Um, do ask you, Lord, to, to be with our brother Ron, too, as he's undergoing some testing on Friday, that you'd continue the healing that you've begun in him as well. And, Lord, that you would just make us mindful of these things, that you would bring to remembrance these scriptures this week as you give us opportunity to minister to those around us. And, and, and remember, Lord, that without those in need, there'd be no need for us, Lord, and, and not that you need us. But thankfully, Lord, you... You use us. So, Lord, bless your people again. Lord, give wisdom to those in leadership, those that are in the position to make decisions that affect all of us. Lord, that, that you would turn the heart of the king, that, that, that you would determine those decisions and that your will would be done, Lord. That's what we want. In Jesus' name, amen.